Our story begins with a man who was just starting his political career, and at the time, no one knew him except his mother. This girl loved him, or rather, he was the one who pursued her. At that time, she came from a very wealthy family, and her father owned a company called GP. He didn't approve of the marriage, but she fought for her love and married the politician. Back then, he was like a prize for her. However, he cheated on her with an actress who became pregnant. She left before they could marry and gave her child a different man's name. Later, her mother took the child back to the politician. He welcomed them warmly because he still loved her and lived secretly with them behind his wife's back. His wife discovered his affair and that he had a child. She immediately warned the actress. The actress decided to flee to America with her daughter and asked him to come with them. Of course, he refused because his political career was more important. He promised her he would come to her house, so she waited, as usual, but he didn't come. She drank a lot that day, which upset her daughter, who saw her mother like that. Out of innocence, the daughter gave her some sleeping pills, saying she would wake her up when her father arrived. The woman took the pills and went to her room, but after a while, the daughter heard noises from her mother's room. She went in to find her mother lying on the floor with the pills scattered nearby. Terrified, she turned to call for help but was blinded by a flashlight. Someone tied her up, causing her to lose consciousness. When she woke up, she found herself with her father's secretary, who was taking her to the airport, lying to her that she would see her father. Instead, they sent her to Spain, where she was raised in a church, far away from everyone. If anyone found out that her father, a prominent politician, had an illegitimate daughter, it would ruin his career. She lived in Spain, always hoping to see her father and believing he would rescue her. Eventually, she escaped from the church to find him, but they chased her as usual. She ran into the subway, where she bumped into a Korean man. She begged him to help her, promising her father would reward him. He ignored her and walked away. But later, when he saw that people were really chasing her, he decided to help and fought one of them. She ran outside, and as he was leaving, he saw her being captured and locked in a car. He didn't help because the person capturing her was a police officer, and he didn't want to get involved with the authorities. Later, the man traveled to Korea, working various odd jobs. One night, he was asked to go to a building to fix a sign. While working, he saw through the window a man with a woman, but he didn't pay much attention. The man inside, a well-known politician and the girl's father, panicked when he realized someone might have seen him and told the girl to close the curtains. She did. But then the politician collapsed. The girl had drugged him, and it turned out she was working with his political rival in the upcoming presidential elections. The rival sent the police to catch him in the act. From outside, the man, our hero, watched without understanding what was going on. What really caught his attention was that they hit the old lady who had helped him earlier, which he couldn't tolerate. So he broke the window to defend her and fought everyone until the politician's security arrived, saving him from scandal while our hero saved the old lady. After that, he went back to live with an elderly couple who had lost their son long ago and let him stay with them as company. They were very kind and supportive of him. Meanwhile, the politician's wife was filming a program boasting about how great her relationship with her husband was. When she heard the news of his affair, she wasn't shocked but upset about him cheating for the 500th time. She was even more disturbed when she found out that someone had seen his face, our hero. She yelled at her team who worked for a powerful insurance company in Korea called GSS. The head of the company was so afraid of her that he sent men to kill the hero, but the hero easily defeated them and escaped, just as the politician's assistant had warned. When the assistant saw the surveillance footage, he recognized the hero as someone he had trained in the special forces, the best among them. The politician didn't believe it until he saw his men completely defeated. The wife then decided to handle the matter herself. She sent one of her best men to the hero's new address, where he lived with the elderly couple. The man tied them up to force the hero to confess, but instead, the hero fought back, eventually uncovering everything. Suddenly, he was with them. But he didn't care. When they tried to mess with him, he easily took them all down. At that point, the trainer decided to assign him to a job that didn't involve much teamwork, to avoid more issues. They sent him to Sector C, which is where the politician's daughter was staying. It turned out his wife had brought the daughter back from Spain to prevent her from escaping again, 
and to keep her under her watch. If her husband ever tried to abandon her, she could use the daughter to pressure him. He was terrified of her because, after the girl's mother died, he had made a deal with his wife to protect his daughter. In return, he promised to follow their plan to reach the Blue House, the South Korean presidential office. But recently, he had grown tired of her controlling him, so she brought his daughter back to keep him in line. When he learned that his daughter was staying in the house, he became afraid to speak to her in case his wife found out, which would cause more harm. So, he decided to ignore her presence, leaving the poor girl to live alone in the house. They explained to him how things worked there. They told him that I, the politician's daughter, was afraid of flashlights and that I didn't interact with them directly. So, they went about their day while I stayed in my room, only coming out at night to take a shower. That was when they would clean my room and check if I had hidden anything. Then each person would return to their rooms because that was the time I liked to walk around the house and eat. One night, he watched me on the cameras as I left my room. He found me endearing, especially when he saw that I didn't like the food and wanted to make noodles. He started paying attention to every movement I made, but unfortunately, I couldn't make the noodles because the gas was turned off. He felt bad for me when I went back to my room upset and went to sleep. Then he heard a noise on the roof and thought someone was breaking in. He called the girl who was supposed to protect me, but she was sound asleep. So he decided to check it out himself and went up to the roof where he found me sitting and feeding a cat. I was crying because my father hadn't come to greet me and that really touched his heart. He admired me even more when he saw how easily I climbed down from the roof and returned to my room without anyone noticing. At that time, my father was at a party with his wife. He was, of course, flirting with other women, and I watched him the entire time. Not only that, but as they were leaving, she made him go back to meet one of the girls instead of just dropping her off. He told her, you know, you really are a good wife for helping me out. And then he walked off pretending in front of everyone how much he loved her. She left with tears in her eyes, barely able to hide them. The next day, she found out that her aunt had died. Her aunt was the only family member who still spoke to her, and she loved her. She went to the funeral with her husband, but the security there didn't allow all of her bodyguards to enter. Only one and her driver were permitted. So, our hero was assigned to act as the driver and leader. Once inside, they found that she and the rest of her family were being taken to a restricted area. Feeling uneasy about the situation, he gave her a pen and said, press this once if you feel in danger, I'll hear what's happening and understand the situation. If you want me to intervene, press it twice. She took the pen and entered the room where they had gathered everyone to read her aunt's will. Her aunt had left all her shares in the company to her. Her aunt's husband protested and not only that, but her brother also argued, saying, You don't need the shares. Stick to your husband's work and leave the family business to us. He even offered to buy them from her at three times their value. Her husband immediately agreed, saying the money would help him become president. She looked at him in disgust for selling her out so easily and pressed the pen once. At that point, Kido, our hero, was listening in on the conversation but suddenly lost connection with the pen. He began to wonder if this woman could really be bought off with money, knowing that the shares represented power much more than money. Her husband was encouraging the sale to weaken her. He sensed that she was being forced into the deal, so he went to the room where he found guards stationed outside and the door locked from the inside. He knew they were holding her until she agreed to sell. He fought off all the guards outside and set something on fire to trigger the fire alarm. As the alarm went off, everyone panicked and opened the doors, Everyone rushed out thinking there was a real fire, but she stood frozen in the room, shocked by their treachery. Calmly, Kido shielded her from the water with an umbrella and led her out of the building. He placed a hand on her back as they walked out to the others. She flinched, but he told her, Stand tall, your enemies are watching. She obeyed and left the building with pride. Then she told her husband not to ride in the same car as her, punishing him for what he had done. As she sat in the car, she realized she hadn't pressed the pen twice. How had Kido known she was in danger? This made her fear him even more, so she warned him not to act on his own again. He didn't care and just said, okay, to appease her, but she knew he was only humoring her. She took him to the security company's headquarters and walked with the directors. One of the trainers there had heard a female doctor talking about how strong Kido was. 
and he wanted to show off in front of her. So he arranged for Kido to fight him while the doctor watched, thinking it would impress her. But she rushed in to stop the fight, hitting the trainer to make him let go of Kido. The trainer realized there was no hope. Meanwhile, Kido returned to Anna's house and prepared everything for her noodles. That night, when she came out of the shower, she made her noodles and was very happy. Kido was happy too, watching her enjoy them. Then he received a call from the company asking him to come to the ninth floor, but he didn't understand why. They sent a car for him, treating him like royalty. He got into the elevator and pressed 9, but to his surprise, it took him underground instead of up. When the door opened, he was even more surprised by what he saw. He entered to find the woman, Anna, with the directors and her assistant. They were discussing how they were going to destroy her enemies. He was amazed by the place. After the meeting, she gave him a tour, explaining that she ran the place and it was more powerful than even the intelligence agency. When he asked why she had brought him there, she said, I want to hear your story. We're in the same boat now, and we both have the same target. So he told her about Rania and their love story and how she had been killed by that man's, the politician's men, and how they had framed him for her murder, but he had escaped. She allowed him to use her mirror, a super intelligent AI system she had created, filled with incredible information. He asked it about what happened on the day of Rania's death. The AI revealed that Rania had translated a critical conversation about political weapons, and that's why she was killed. When Anna heard this, she said, Wow, so he's involved in weapons too. Kido looked at her and she quickly said, I don't mean wow like it's good, I mean it's dangerous. He spent all night asking the AI questions and by morning he went home. There they told him that G4, the girl who was supposed to be protecting Anna, had left early. He went into the house and found G4 dead while Anna was missing. He knew she had run away. Chaos erupted as everyone searched for her and they tracked her location using G4's credit card. She had used it to take a taxi to her old neighborhood, where her mother had lived. She visited a photo studio, where the photographer recognized her and told her he had kept a picture of her and her mother. He also told her that the last time they had come in was to take passport photos for America, making her even more suspicious of her mother's death. If her mother had been planning to travel with her, why would she have killed herself? The photographer then showed her another photo, which revealed that her mother's friend had been with them. Anna began to suspect that the friend might know something and set out to find her. She found her. At first, she didn't recognize her, but as soon as she reminded her of herself, she became terrified and remembered her mother. She kept telling her to run away with her daughter. Eugene will kill you. That's when she realized that her stepmother was behind all of this. She overheard on J4's radio that the others were coming and searching for her. She quickly put on a nun's outfit and escaped in front of them, heading to the church where her father would be. She stood there, waiting for him to see her. The moment he saw her, he was horrified and told his wife, My daughter is here, which upset her as he exposed her immediately, especially when K2 and the others tried to catch her, but they couldn't move in the church giving her a chance to reveal more, but she couldn't speak. So she quickly left with the other nuns. K2 ran after them, only to find her gone. But she had left a note for her father, telling him she was lost and asking him to come and get her. When he saw the note, he didn't understand what she meant. And since his wife was next to him, he got scared and told them to go find her, as he didn't really care. So they looked for her and figured out her location. She was at the Garden of Dreams, they all prepared to go there. K2 told them to move slowly so as not to scare her and said he'd approach her first. They agreed. He got her some ice cream and ran to her. At first she thought it was her father, but when she realized it wasn't, she was disappointed. However, he handed her the ice cream kindly. She asked him if it was from her father and he said, Yes, dear, he sent me here. She accepted it and started eating it. Then she began talking about how much she loved that place because she used to go there with her mother and father. He was touched, but suddenly she lost consciousness. He called for help. When they contacted her home, they found out that she had a severe strawberry allergy. He was confused as to why she ate it. He quickly tried to save her and called for an ambulance. They refused, as an ambulance would cause a scene. So they decided it was best to take her to the company right away. They did. 
and K2 became completely obsessed with her. What drove him even crazier was when she woke up and Eugene mocked her, saying that her father didn't care about her. K2 couldn't take it anymore and stepped in to defend her. Eugene was surprised by his concern but walked away. K2 promised Anna that he would bring her father to her. He followed his instincts and found some suspicious people in the crowd. When he attacked one of them, he realized it was a colleague. But suddenly the colleague pushed him and told him to be quiet before throwing an egg at a politician. K2 didn't understand what was going on, but the politician calmly accepted it, claiming he respected opposing opinions. It was all an act. The politician was shady, and K2 saw through the fake performance. The politician invited K2 into his dressing room and told the girl that he was going to shower and she should join him. She eagerly agreed. She had a syringe and was planning to sedate him, but K2 caught her before she could. He looked at her in disgust, explaining that she worked for his rival in the election, trying to trap him in a scandal. As usual, Bark sent the police to arrest him, but K2 helped him escape and the politician was grateful. He told K2 he was truly special, just as she had said. K2, seizing the opportunity, asked the politician to do him a favor and meet his daughter, but he refused, saying his wife would kill her if she knew he visited his daughter or showed interest in her. K2 didn't care and took him there anyway. The politician promised K2 that if he was doing all this for his daughter, he would protect her. When the politician entered, Anna couldn't believe it. She immediately hugged him and asked him to save her from Eugene, who had killed her mother. Eugene was watching them, and her father knew this, so he kept telling his daughter she was imagining things. Anna was shocked and grew to despise him for it. He wanted to break down, but since he knew his wife was watching, he pretended not to care and left. When his wife saw this, she thought he was serious and laughed, realizing that she had chosen the right man to spend her life with. Anna, after meeting her father, was left dazed. Even when they told her she would return home, she didn't respond. K2 told her to snap out of it because everyone was risking their lives for her. She ignored him as well, so he told her she didn't deserve his promise to her father. That piqued her curiosity, and she kept asking him about it on the way back. Annoyed by her persistence, he finally revealed that he had promised her father to protect her. She didn't believe him as she was convinced her father wasn't a good person. K2 understood, but told her she still didn't know the whole truth. When they arrived, as K2 was about to open the door for her, someone tried to take a picture of her. K2 chased after the person and caught him, but the guy apologized, saying he was only there to capture the angel. It turned out that when she was escaping in Spain, she had accidentally stood in front of a famous fashion designer, who was so captivated by her, that he took her picture and shared it online, referring to her as the angel. She had become famous since then. A couple of days earlier, when she was waiting for her father in the garden, people had taken pictures of her and now everyone knew that the angel was in Korea. K2 saw this as an opportunity to protect her even more. He told the photographer to publish her photos everywhere, along with her location. Soon, people and media gathered outside the house, when Eugene heard about this, she immediately ordered her forces to get rid of Anna, as it was easier than letting the public know who she really was. K2, with J4's help, managed to protect Anna from all the assassins. He told Anna to appear in public. A woman came out first, telling the crowd that Anna was afraid of camera flashes, so they should turn them off, and that she would come out soon. Everyone turned off their cameras, and Anna came out. She mentioned her mother's name, and everyone was amazed by the resemblance since her mother had been a famous actress known for her beauty. When they asked Anna about her father, Eugene arrived and was about to have a breakdown, but Anna quickly lied and gave the name of her registered father. To distract everyone, Eugene's men turned the cameras back on, and Anna, terrified, collapsed to the ground. Eugene ran over to her, pretending to care deeply, saying that Anna was like her own daughter, then she scolded everyone around her. Later, K2 told Anna that this had been his plan all along. She asked him why he had done it, and with calm indifference, he told her it was better than having Eugene kill her in front of everyone. Eugene responded, So what? You know I could still kill her tomorrow if I wanted to? Bravo, though. She walked away nearly in tears, realizing that K2 was now on Anna's side and not hers. 
That night, Anna was on the rooftop as usual, looking like she was about to fall. K2 rushed to save her, but he ended up falling instead, embarrassed. She laughed at him and asked him to stay with her for a while. They talked about the day her mother died, and Anna revealed that she believed she had killed her mother because she had given her the sleeping pills that were mentioned in the report as the cause of death. K2 comforted her, telling her she had been a child and shouldn't blame herself. The next day, everyone was surprised to see Anna acting differently at home. She wanted them to have breakfast together, which made them all very happy, especially J4. Anna even told J4 that she knew she wanted to be transferred to a different place and was tired of working there, so she would talk to the security company about it. But K2 interrupted, telling Anna that would never happen, as anyone who knew about her and her true identity would disappear after her father won the presidency. Anna was shocked and felt guilty that this would happen to them because of her. This made her hate her stepmother even more. Later, K2 confronted Eugene, accusing her of siding with Anna against him. He also criticized her, saying she was no different from Bark, killing innocent people just to achieve her goals. Eugene admitted that Anna wasn't innocent, but said it didn't matter. Their focus should now be on their plan against Bark. Eugene revealed that she planned to destroy Bark's reputation, barring him from the election. K2, exasperated, asked, Are you kidding? Who cares about politics? That's not my concern. She explained that if they ruined Bark's reputation, it would be more effective than killing him, which would only turn him into a martyr. K2 reluctantly agreed and left with Eugene. On their way out, they ran into Anna, who had come to the company to see the doctor. Afterward, they showed her around the place, and she seemed to enjoy it especially when Eugene's brother showed up. He told Anna that he would stand by her against his sister because Eugene, when she saw Javor and that guy, they got close and played together. So she asked him to play with her like they did. At first he said, what kind of silliness is this girl? But he ended up chasing after her casually. He started to see her as a bit different and suspected that maybe they liked each other. Later that night, to make her feel more secure, he gave her a device to talk to him. She kept calling him until he fell asleep, but she was still awake. So she went out to check on him and found him having a nightmare. As soon as he woke up, he hugged her to comfort her. She got very anxious, and so did he when he fully woke up. He sent her back to her room, and she couldn't sleep from excitement. In the morning, she asked Javor to do her makeup and sent him a picture. He was surprised by her new look, and even more shocked when she said, You're mine now. He didn't understand what was going on and just laughed at her. Later, he went with Eugene to shoot a TV show and was surprised when the host asked her about Anna and her relationship with her. She lied and said Anna was her friend's daughter whom she raised after her mother died. The host then said, Since you're family now, we have a surprise for you. Anna walked into the studio and Eugene was immediately overwhelmed with embarrassment. Keto became worried for her, realizing that Choi wasn't protecting her, but using her as a weapon against his sister. But none of this mattered when Anna told them she suspected her mother was murdered. Everything flipped upside down again. After the show, she had another shoot, and Keto stayed with her. Meanwhile, Eugene's stepmother's secretary had reached her breaking point. She ordered her men to go to the filming location and kill both Anna and Keto. They went there, but Keto sensed them immediately and made Anna escape through the openings. He fought them off, but when Anna saw him fighting like that, she came down pretending to protect him. The hitmen started chasing her, but Keto defended her from all of them. He almost died from the gas they used in that place, but Anna gave him an oxygen device just in time. As soon as he recovered, he took her home. Then he went furious to confront Eugene. He found her and the others planning to kill Park that night, and they told him that there was no way he'd come back alive from the mission. He agreed, but said he had two conditions. First, if they killed Park, the secretary must be killed too. She agreed and said, kill him first and I'll sacrifice my own head. His second condition was that Anna must be kept safe. Eugene agreed, though she was frustrated that even in death, his priority was Anna. Before he left, he reassured Eugene that he had long closed the account she had been using to blackmail him. Later, Anna called him, having learned about his mission, and cried, Asking him to bring her favorite food that night, he promised he would. He then went with the others to Park's house. At first, they pretended to be his guards, but they were caught quickly. Keto managed to escape along with the team leader, and they both started shooting at Park's men. When the situation became chaotic, 
Park retreated to his secret room and locked himself inside. Kido managed to get in with him. He found Park terrified of being killed and called Eugene, hinting that he was alone. Eugene understood that Kido wouldn't be able to kill Park by himself, so she switched to plan B. She blackmailed Park into having his men release her husband who had been in prison for a while. Park agreed and freed him immediately. Not only that, but they also asked Park to invite him to join their political party, the most powerful one in the country, securing Eugene's husband's presidency. She then threatened Park, saying she could simply order Kido to kill him. Park became so terrified of her and Kido that he even offered Kido money to let him go. Kido agreed and took the money, but Park then recognized him from Iraq. Kido kept his composure, but asked Park to order his men to let his team go safely. He even made Park walk out with him in front of his men ensuring his safety. As they were leaving, the team leader, who had been ordered by the secretary to kill Kido, hesitated. Remembering Kido's bravery inside, he couldn't bring himself to do it. They returned safely together. Kido then went to see Anna, who saw his car from a distance and ran to hug him as soon as he arrived. Her father, on the other hand, was furious when he found out that Anna had almost been killed. He immediately slapped his wife. She angrily attacked him, calling him a fool for pretending to care about his daughter when he had once had the chance to escape with her and her mother to live a happy life, but chose to stay in politics. She mocked herself for ever loving a man like him, pointing out how he had played with her emotions since she was young and how until recently, he knew she still loved him and exploited that. He stood there silently as she told him, the proper response would be to cut off the hand you just raised against me but you'll need it until you become president, so I'll spare it for now. But remember, I'll take it later. Then she walked away confidently. A true queen, always and forever a queen. After all this, she casually applied her makeup, got in her car, and went looking for Kido. She found him having dinner with Anna and the security team. Seeing him happy made her feel reassured, so she left. When Kido returned to Anna, she put a face mask on him like the rest of the team. After everyone fell asleep, she treated his wounds, and they stayed up late on the rooftop, as usual. He felt more comfortable with her than ever, and told her about his nightmare, that he was once accused of killing someone he loved. She comforted him, just as he had done for her, assuring him it wasn't his fault. He had been through so much. The next day, Kido went to Eugene to talk about what Park had said. Meanwhile, Eugene went with Choi to her mother's grave. There. Choi told her he'd heard about a thief who claimed to have been in their house the night her mother died. They rushed to find him, and he told them that he had entered the house that night to steal but saw Eugene killing her mother. This confirmed what they already suspected, that her stepmother had killed her mother. Eugene confronted her stepmother in front of everyone, this time determined to expose her. She decided to participate in a fashion show in her mother's honor, and as she prepared, she made sure Kido was ready as well. When she entered the show, everyone was amazed by her presence. Until she had Choi's men flash lights in her eyes, which startled her, K2 immediately rushed to protect her. The purpose of the move was to generate buzz about the fashion show and boost Anna's fame. That way, when rumors about her mother surfaced, everyone would pay attention. The next day, rumors spread, with Eugene's camp claiming Anna was her real daughter, the product of an illicit affair. Others said she had killed Anna's mother, there were all sorts of crazy stories. At first, Eugene tried to ignore it and went about her charity work, but journalists bombarded her. The pressure got to her, and she fainted. K2 came to her and told her Anna was doing all of this because she believed Eugene killed her mother. He asked her if it was true. Eugene admitted, I'll be honest with you, I didn't kill her, nor did I order it, but I know who did. He was shocked and asked why she let her husband and his daughter believe she was the murderer. Eugene tearfully confessed, so they would fear me, and he'd stay with me out of concern for his daughter. Later, her husband took her in for questioning in connection to Anna's mother's murder, and he was pleased about it. Realizing he had betrayed her, she betrayed him too. On the way to the investigation, when reporters asked if Anna was her real daughter, she responded, yes, she's basically my daughter since she's my husband's child. She cried and apologized, earning public sympathy for enduring her husband's infidelity while raising his daughter. The big twist came when it was revealed that the supposed witness, who claimed to have seen Eugene kill Anna's mother, had been in jail at the time. So, 
his testimony was discredited, and Eugene turned out to be the real winner of the plot, hatched by Choi, Anna, and her husband. She came out looking like a hero, with the public siding with her. She even forced her husband to hold a press conference where he smeared Anna's mother, saying they had been involved before he met his wife. When she got pregnant, he was in jail, and she gave birth in America, registering Anna under her husband's name. Anna was shocked to learn that the events were true, but not the part about her mother blackmailing her father. Her father finally came to her, and she agreed to meet him. He apologized for being a terrible father, for failing to protect her or her mother. Anna told him he was just making excuses for his wife, that he had sacrificed them in favor of his political career, and still cared more about it than them. She declared that from that moment on she was no longer his daughter. She then went to cry at her mother's grave, only to find Eugene there who told her they were alike, both damaged by their fathers. Eugene expressed her wish that Anna had been her real daughter, which startled Anna. But she told Eugene to leave her alone because she planned to leave the country with K2. Angry that K2 might abandon everything for Anna, Eugene tried to provoke her saying, K2? Sweetheart, wake up, he's a wanted man. If it weren't for me giving him a job at my company, they'd have caught him with one phone call. He can't leave Korea right now. He's after revenge for Rania, his true love. Anna was shocked at how little she knew about K2. Eugene walked away triumphant, knowing she had gotten under Anna's skin. Meanwhile, K2 was getting closer to taking down Park. Park had brokered a shady arms deal in Iraq, and if it was exposed, it would ruin him and everyone involved, including Choi's brother. Eugene ordered K2 to find the evidence so they could use it to threaten them. Through her connections, K2 discovered that during the deal there had been volunteer doctors present, including the president's son, who was no ordinary doctor. K2 suspected the evidence was with him, proof that could protect his father once he left office. K2 began tailing him, making it obvious so the son might panic and move the evidence, but that didn't work. So K2 switched tactics and pretended he already had the evidence, which scared the son into making a move. K2 caught up with him, but Park's men were also after the evidence. Unlike them, K2 didn't want to kill the guy. When the son fell, K2 grabbed the evidence and pulled him to safety, but K2 was shot by Park's men. Fortunately, K2's team got to him in time. Eugene was terrified when she heard what happened and ordered them to take him to the safest place, Cloud9, her company's secure facility. The media had already turned on K2, accusing him of attempting to kill the president's son, and they stormed her company. They were about to search the place when the president's son woke up and told them K2 had actually saved him. Reluctantly, the authorities left, and Eugene realized that K2 probably had the evidence. After his operation, she walked out and found Anna, who was devastated and begging to see him. Eugene told her, If you want to see him, call me mom. Certain Anna wouldn't do it. Eugene was shocked when Anna called her mom and begged to see K2. Touched, Eugene allowed her to go in. Anna wept over K2 and decided that for his sake, she would leave the country and disappear. When K2 woke up, the first thing he asked the mirror was if Anna had visited. The mirror showed him the video and as Eugene rushed in, thrilled to see him awake, she realized he only cared about Anna. Disappointed yet again, Eugene asked him about the evidence. K2 coldly said he didn't take it for her. He took it to protect Anna from her and to protect himself. Stunned, Eugene told him to do as he pleased. Her weakness didn't go unnoticed by the company's president, who sensed that her feelings for K2 were jeopardizing them all. He conspired with Choi's brother against her, letting him into the company and even into Cloud9. Eugene was shocked when she saw her brother with a bomb, demanding she sign over her shares and give him access to the mirror. He also wanted K2 to hand the evidence over to Park's men. K2 revealed that he had lost the evidence when he was shot but knew where it was. After K2 left safely, Eugene told her brother to come to her hotel, where she ordered the mirror to stop the elevator. Now, if he detonated the bomb, they would both die. She then located the president's son and his family through the mirror and sent men to America to kill them, offering a reward for swift action. Her brother broke down begging for his life. Eugene told him to prove he was sincere, 
Without hesitation, he obeyed. He had given up on himself, so she paused her plan to kill his son and family. All this happened while her brother watched in shock. He was even more stunned when she offered her men a million dollars to kill him. They tried, but he quickly told her he was the only one who could defuse the bomb. So she told him, fine, stay with me for a while. At this point, Kido managed to get the evidence and his boss appeared, hitting Park's man. Then, Kido found Anna's father, who was demanding the evidence so they could join him and not Eugene. Kido refused at first, but later handed over the evidence, asking them to make its contents public in order to save his wife. He called her, asking if he should follow the hero's advice. She was thrilled that he cared so much, but told him not to reveal anything yet and to use it as leverage against Park and the others. What they didn't know was that Park had already kidnapped Anna from the airport and was holding her. Kido went to rescue her, but they managed to take her to the company. The rest of the company's men saved her and the kind trainer helped her escape from Park's men. While they were hiding together in the dark, she remembered that he was the one who flashed a light in her eyes the day her mother died. She realized then that he was the killer, not Eugene. Shocked, she ran away, and Kido arrived just in time to protect her. However, he fainted after being shot at. She immediately had the doctor take care of him and went downstairs with the secretary to see her father and Eugene. As soon as they entered, her father shot the secretary in the leg and took Anna as a hostage to get the evidence from them. Anna's father arrived with the flash drive and he handed it over. Then he shot his sister as well. She was stunned and told him she was used to having others use weapons on their behalf. He replied, you know me, I'm just a lowlife, the son of a mistress. Her husband then shocked him by revealing that the bomb he gave him could not be deactivated once activated. He was stunned and started begging her to turn on the elevator so he could escape. She did and he took Anna but then decided to go up alone and threw her at Kido, who woke up and rushed to save her. When he returned, he found that the flash drive had fallen out, so they had it again. But that wasn't the important part. The important thing now was that there was no time. They had to quickly take the elevator and escape the bomb. Anna's main concern was finding out if Eugene had hurt her mother or not. Eugene confessed to Anna and her husband that she had indeed visited Anna's mother on the day she died, but the trainer had already killed her on orders from Anna's father, who wanted to protect Anna's choice of husband and political career. When her mother was conscious for a moment, she asked Eugene to save her, but Eugene was too scared to call an ambulance, so she said, protect my daughter then. It turned out Eugene had only been carrying out Anna's mother's wishes and protecting her all this time. Anna was shocked, and her husband was too, especially when Eugene decided not to hinder them and to end her life right there with her mirror. The only thing that had been with her from beginning to end. Her husband, feeling guilty, chose to stay with her, sacrificing himself, and said goodbye to Anna in the elevator. He returned to his wife, holding her close in their final moments together. Anna didn't know whether to laugh or cry. As for those in the elevator, when the explosion happened, everyone was terrified, thinking they had died. But no, the three of them, Anna, Kido, and the secretary, were alive. Anna now had the evidence against the country's top politicians and had become the heir to her father's fortune and Eugene's. Kido was finally cleared of the charges against him. He had been framed for killing civilians in Iraq during a mission, which made him an internationally wanted criminal. But now he was exonerated. Cato and Park's assistant had also conspired to kill Park. They made sure Park took his own life and joined Eugene and her husband in death. As for the secretary, who had grown to love them, she went to avenge herself on Choi, killing him for what he had done to her and Eugene. After all of this, the top politicians expected Anna wouldn't stay innocent for long and would join them just like Eugene had once done. But they were wrong. Anna decided to expose them. Before the hero could even explain things to her, she released all the evidence. After that, she left with him just as they had planned. As they traveled together, she asked him what his real name was. Just as he was about to tell her, the show ended. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our recap, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out more recaps on our channel. Take care.